This video is the sample test for functions trigonometry for law of sines, law of cosines, and then the angle formulas. So this first part of the video will be just the graphing calculator portion of the test, which is going to be the law of sines and the law of cosines. Um, as a reminder, we do have a formula sheet for this and it has all of the composite angle argument properties. Those are called the addition and subtraction properties, the double argument or the double angle properties, the half argument or the half angle properties, and then down at the bottom of the page, we've got the law of cosines and the law of sines. So one version is each of these. You should realize that for the law of sines, you could also rewrite it with the angle on the bottom and the side on the top, as long as you flip all of them. And then for the law of cosines, we should realize that we could start with any other letter, like we could start with b squared instead, and then it would be a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine, and the angle letter is always the same as the letter we start with. So you could rewrite that to any version that you want. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the test here. Um, also, you want to be sure that with your calculator that you are in degree mode, so double check that or all your angles are not going to work out. And let's read our first situation. A ship at sea, the Santa Maria, spots two other ships, the Nina and the Pinta, and measures the angle between them to be 38 degrees. So let's start out here. So we've got um, the Santa Maria. I'll put that here. I've got the Nina and I've got the Pinta. It doesn't really matter where we label them. Um, the angle between the ships, so the angle between the Nina and the Pinta, which would be down here, is 38 degrees. They radio the Nina, and by comparing known landmarks, the distance between the Santa Maria and the Nina is found to be 75 miles. So that's the distance between the Santa Maria and the Nina. The Nina reports an angle of 24 degrees, between the Santa Maria and the Pinta, which means that this angle up here is 24 degrees, the angle that's at the Nina. Um, it says sketch and label the relationship between the three ships. So that's what I have so far. If I were to label the sides, this would be little side P, this would be little side N, and over here across from angle, let's just call that M for Maria, would be little angle M, or little side M. All right, it says what is the measure of the angle between the Santa Maria and the Nina? That would be the angle at the pinta. So I know that I have a total of 180 degrees in a triangle. Take away the 30 degrees at the Santa Maria. Take away the 24 degrees at the Nina. And that's going to give me 118 degrees. So my triangle is not really drawn to scale here, but I'm not going to worry about that. All right, it says for the next question, what is the distance between the Nina and the pinta? The distance between the Nina and the pinta would be over here. That's going to be side M. So I'm going to put that, this can be a law of sines. Anytime I know uh, two angles or more, I know I can use law of sines. So I'll do that for this one. I'm going to put my side I want on the top. Then that would be over the sine of 38, which is the angle across from it. Then I pick the other relationship I know. I know both big P and little p. So my little p is 75. I'll put that on top. And that's going to be over the sine of the big P, which is the sine of 118. Um, so I'm going to solve this on my calculator. I have 75 divided by the sine of 118. If you have a TI, be careful. Be sure you close the parentheses after the sine of 118. And then I'm going to multiply across that sine of 38. And I can get my answer there. The distance is 52.2959. And now I want to use units. And up here it said they were all miles. So I'm going to put miles in my answer. By the way, on the last one, I didn't mention it, but this degree symbol up here, that is my units. My degrees uh, is my measure for angle. Okay, question number two. We have triangle HUG, so I'm going to go ahead and label triangle HUG. I label all of my angles with capital letters, and then I label the sides across from each angle with lowercase letter. So I've labeled all of my angles and sides, and now I'm going to fill in the information I know. Angle H is 62 degrees. Little h is 9 and little u is 10. So I know that I can use the law of sines for this one because I have both h's, or I know an angle and a side across from it. I also know that what I know right here is an angle and then a side and then a side touching it. So that's the ambiguous case. Uh, whenever I'm using the law of sines to solve for an angle, I have to be careful and remember there could be no solution, one solution, or maybe two solutions. So I am looking for the possible measures of angle G 
But right now, in order to figure out anything with G, I would need to know in law of sines either big G or little g, and I don't know either one of those. So right now, the only thing I can figure out from law of sines is possibly what angle U is over here. So I'm going to start with that one. I've got the sine of angle U over 10 is equal to the sine of angle H, which is 62 degrees, over little h, which is 9. So I'm going to multiply across. So I have the sine of 62 divided by 9. I'm going to multiply the 10 across to get the u by itself. And now I have the sine of u is equal to 0.9810. I'm not going to truncate that um, on my calculator. I need to get rid of the sine. So I do that by inverse signing. So when I inverse sign, that's the second sign of the shift sign of that answer. And now I have to know that my calculator only ever gives me one answer, 78.8288 degrees. My calculator is only ever going to give me one answer for an inverse sign. But I know that sine was positive in both the first and second quadrant. So if my first answer could be 78 degrees, I also have to consider, could it have been the supplement of that? So could angle U also be 180 minus this 78 degree number? And let's look at that. I'll do it on my calculator. 180 minus that answer would mean angle U has the potential to be 101.1711 degrees. The way I'm going to decide whether or not this would work would be to look back at my original triangle. If I make angle U 101 degrees, would I still have enough left so that I have some angles here for angle G? And the answer to that question is yes, because I would have right now a total of about 163 degrees, so I have some left. So I know that I have to consider both solutions to this triangle. So let's go ahead and find G now. So I'm going to have G1 and I'm going to have G2. Um, since I already have this 101 degree angle in my calculator, I'm going to say, if I started with 180, I take away the 62 degrees that I have for angle H. If I take away that answer that I currently have for the second U, then that would make G 16.8288 degrees, which is one possibility for G. My other possibility for G was if I'd had 180 degrees and I took away the 62 degrees for angle H. Now what happens if instead of this 101 in the triangle, I used the 78 degrees in the triangle? So if I took away 78.8288, that would give me my second angle G, which is 39.1712 degrees. I need both answers if both are possibilities. Okay, turning to page number three, we have triangle PMN. So I'm going to draw that, P, M, N. We've got little p across from angle P, that's 8. We've got little m across from side M, that's 9. And we've got little n across from angle N, and that's 7. So in this one, what I know is three sides. So I know side, side, side. I can't use the law of sines because I don't know any angles. Remember, in order to use the law of sines, I have to know two of the same letter. And in this case, I know three different letters. So I'm going to have to use the law of cosines. It doesn't really matter which angle I solve for in the law of cosines, except that they ask me to find angle M. So if I want to use the law of cosines that has the cosine of big angle M in it, that means I need to use a law of cosine that starts with a little m on the left side. The remaining two letters are just the other two letters in the triangle, which in our case are n, so I'd have n squared, and p, so I'd have p squared. And then that's minus 2np cosine of m. All right, so I'm going to fill into my formula right now. Little m is 9. Little n was 7. Little p was 8. And then I didn't know angle m. So the biggest trouble that we have on this one is following order of operations. I'm going to start with my 9 squared, and then I'm going to subtract 7 squared, and I'm going to subtract 8 squared when I move them over. So I'll do that on my calculator. 9 squared minus 7 squared minus 8 squared. And I have negative 32 on the left. 
I have to realize that all of this is multiplied together. So my coefficient of my cosine of m is negative 2 times 7 times 8. So my coefficient over here is negative 112, and that's cosine of m. In order to get rid of the negative 112, I need to divide it over to the other side. And then to get rid of my cosine, I'm going to inverse cosine. So on my calculator, I'm going to inverse cosine uh, negative 32 divided by negative 112. And that gives me 73.3984 degrees. Remember, with cosine, cosine was positive on the right and negative on the left. So when I inverse cosine, it will give me an acute answer if the answer is acute, an obtuse answer if the answer is obtuse. I only have to worry about one possible angle for the law of cosines. All right, number four, sketch a triangle with sides five centimeters. So I'm just going to label that five and six centimeters. So I'm going to label that six and an included angle of 50 degrees. So I know that the angle between these two has to be 50 degrees. Use an appropriate technique to calculate the possible length of the third side. So this is side angle side, because I know a side, I know the angle between it, and I know the other side. So that means it's going to be a law of cosines. So let me go ahead and label some stuff. Um, if I just follow my normal order, I would have ABC. So that would make this 6 a little A, this 5 a little C. And that would mean I would be looking for little b. All right, so if I'm looking uh, for little b, the angle I know is angle b. So that means I have to use the law of cosines that has that cosine of b in it. So I'm going to start my formula with a little b. And then I'd have a little a and a little c minus 2 times a times c times the cosine of b. So let's go ahead and fill into that formula. I don't know what little b is. a was 6. C was 5. Again, A was 6. C was 5. The angle B was 50 degrees. Uh, the easiest thing for me to do right here is to just go ahead and type this exact thing into my calculator. I've got 6 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 5 times 6 times the cosine of 50. I type it all in, in a row, and that gives me this 22 number right here. The thing that I have to realize is this, this number was b squared. So now I'm going to square root that answer. And it gives me that side b is 4.7363. And for units in my problem, I had centimeters. So I want to go back and put that there. And it's always a good idea to just look when we're done um, and see, does this make sense? Would it make sense that this side over here was 4.7-ish? Sure, those are realistic lengths for the side of a triangle. Um, let's just run back through my other answers and check them before we do the last two. So on number three, in this one, I wound up with angle M being 73 degrees. That looks like it's reasonable. These should be pretty close to 60 if all three of the sides are about the same length. So all three of the angles should be relatively the same size. So that's a good answer for number three. Going back to the first page, um, in this one, I had 118 degrees for P, and 75 was the side across from that. Um, so let's see, does it make sense that if angle M is 38, that side M I got was 52.2952? Um, and yes, that makes sense, because that would be a smaller angle across from a smaller side. And then down here on the bottom, this was an ambiguous triangle. But even so, we've got 78 being across from 10. And that's a bigger angle than 62. So that's a bigger side than 60 than, than 9 was. Um, and then the other option would be if angle U was 101, which would still be a bigger side. So that's why this triangle had two solutions. But just for double checking, you know, you can never have more than 180 degrees in a triangle. And you know that you always have to have your bigger sides across from your bigger angles. All right, so let's go back to the end of the test there. Uh, number five says, explain why the following triangle has two solutions. In this one, I know this angle, I know this side, and I know this side. Um, side, side angle is the ambiguous case. Okay. 
So you cannot prove two triangles are congruent there are actually two solutions. And that's because the sine of theta is positive in both 1 and 2. Okay? So that's why that wound up having two solutions, because when we did the inverse sign, we had to consider the second solution, which would be in quadrant two. All right, number six says explain why you cannot use the law of sines for this triangle. So what do we have here? We know a side, we know the angle in between, and we know the side. So um, this is side angle side is a law of cosines. Okay, to use the law of sines, You must know one complete ratio uh, where you have an angle and the side across from it. Okay. All right, so that is the uh, part of the test on the law of sines and law of cosines. And if you want to continue with the next part of the test, we'll have a second video on that. And uh, you can watch that one instead. Thanks.